Hello guys, welcome back to another PowerShell video. In this video, we'll look at um, some of the flow control statements like sleep, break, and uh, we'll, we'll get started with, with some of the loops as well, like while loop, for loop. And to get started, I'll, I'll get started with something simple. So I could do a start sleep, right? And then seconds, uh, two seconds. So as you can see, I'm not using PowerShell uh, command line. I'm using Visual Studio Code. That's the code editor. And this is the terminal that I'll use to, to run the code, right? So it waited two seconds before it executed or it ended the execution of the script. Similarly, you could do, similarly, you could also do M for milliseconds. And I want to say 2000, just again, two seconds. And if I run that, it waits two seconds. If I do 200, that's going to wait a fraction of a second, so the execution is going to happen much quicker. So that's about sleep, right? Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to clear the whole thing, and I'm going to come up with a simple list. We covered lists in the last section. So if I do $num and pipe that to for each, Basically, that's for each object, and I'm just going to do dollar underscore. So what this should do, so I might need uh, bright host, right host dollar underscore. But I'll put this in parentheses. We talked about all this, so there you go. It's printing each of the elements within that list, and that's what we wanted. Uh, this is a very simple use case. Now we're going to use sleep to sleep for so many seconds. So I'm going to say write host sleeping for dollar underscore seconds. And then I want to use, um, I want to have a few statements. So I'm going to do start sleep dollar underscore. What that does is it for each of these objects, it's going to print this statement, the write host statement. And I've got this wrong. It's not, it's semicolon. And here it should um, it should print that it's sleeping and then sleep for so much time. So if I run this again, right? So the time keeps going up each time. So the time it sleeps each time goes up, uh, which is what we saw. Now uh, it's not very interesting, but you could do this to a simple use case could be if you have a website where you've got 10 elements and you want each of the element to sleep for a few milliseconds after the next element is visible. Um, you could do this using using this technique. Now let's move on to break. A break statement when it appears in a loop, um, like for each loop that, that we just had. So I could say if uh, dollar underscore equals three, if I say break, it'll stop at that point. So break statement causes PowerShell to immediately end the loop. So it'll execute the loop to the point where it, where it encounters the break statement and it exits the loop, right? Um, similarly, if you use break statement in a switch, in a switch statement, well, well look, we haven't covered this, but I'm just um, giving you a heads up because when you do go through uh, this as a whole series, uh, it, this will all make sense. But if you're watching just this video, it might not make a whole lot of sense, but I'm going to include links to the videos um, as cards in YouTube, so you will have access to how you can get to those videos. Now let's go ahead and delete this, and I'm going to write a simple for loop. Uh, we haven't done for loops before. In PowerShell, it's very similar to to C. Um, the for loop syntax is very similar to C. Uh, so you could say dollar i any variable you have to use the dollar in the beginning to access uh, that that variable's value so i'm going to say dollar i uh, i'm going to start at zero and i'm going to use semicolon dollar i is less than 10. Oh, let's just do phi 10 is too many for um, for the real estate i've got here and i'm going to do dollar i plus plus right and then you open curly brace so uh, because I'm using Visual Studio, it makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, I had to type both the curly braces because I'm using Visual Studio code. It makes it easier to write code or it takes care of um, pretty much write host. I'm just going to do 
yeah, it takes care of pretty much most of the logistical issues around how you write code, right? So I'm gonna do write host. So this will get us there. But if I do a break statement here, right? If I do break, I don't need that. But so if I save this and run, it's just gonna print zero. It's just gonna print the one number. If I comment this out, you can use uh, control forward slash to comment. It's, yeah, see it prints everything. But if I use this statement, it doesn't, right? I used control slash again. All right, so that's a very simple example on how to demonstrate uh, the use of break. Here I could have an if statement that said only if the value of, um, of i is equal to two, then break, then it'll print zero and one. It'll print two numbers, right? It's very simple. Now I'm gonna do a couple more examples, but to save time, I'm just gonna paste the code. So here I have a variable called i, and I declared another variable, and uh, it's equal to 10, 20, 30, 40. It's a list of four numbers. Then what I'm doing is uh, for each value within this variable, which is basically, it iterates through this list four times, and each time value has one of these numbers. And I'm gonna increment uh, i, basically i becomes one, and then if value equals 30, I'm gonna do a break, right? And it's gonna write 30 was found in array position and then it's gonna tell us which position using this variable. So let's run this, see how we go. I have to save it first. So 30 was found at, so if I do 50, it's not gonna find 50. How come it says 30? Oh, cause I've got, so instead of this, I could do dollar var b, I think. No, 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 val, dollar val, dollar val. I probably need to put this inside. Anyways, let's see. So 40 was found at position four. Yeah, because it didn't. I, if I do 30, it'll work. It'll find it in the right position. And so does for 10, it'll find it in the right position. Basically what's happening is uh, 50 does not exist. So at the end of this loop, i has a value 4 and val has a uh, value of 40 so i could do equal to 90 and it'll still say 40 was found at position 4. it's a bug in our code but that's we didn't do proper design so well it's not a bug but you know you get the gist all right let's move on to the next example all right so this is a good example i've declared a variable i which is 3 and i'm using a while loop the syntax of while loop is while and within parentheses you have a condition here the condition is always true i'm using a built-in powershell variable called dollar true so it's always true and i'm tr i'm using the trap statement to trap an exception this is basically a try catch in java or try accept in python um, that's the, it's the same concept i'm looking for I, when i use trap i'm looking for this exception type and whenever that exception occurs, it says divide by zero trapped, and uh, it's gonna break. All I'm doing is one divide by i minus minus, so whenever three becomes zero, it's gonna throw, uh, or it's gonna get caught up in this trap, yeah? Let's uh, quickly save and run it, see what happens. There we go. Right, uh, it did occur, so I'm just gonna make it a little bigger. So 0.333 is one by three when, when it was three, and then 0.5 when it's two, one when it's one. So divide by zero trapped. So this actually got executed. And then it printed, attempted to divide by zero, which is basically your exception. It printed the exception. So this is a very cool example. We saw this even in Python. Um, if you're a Python, if, a, if you're a programming enthusiast, feel free to check out my Python playlist. I've got a few more examples, but I'll do a part two of this video because it's already past 12 minutes. To start a conversation, leave a comment to this video. Hit the bell icon if you'd like to be notified every time I upload a video. Don't be a miser, share it with others.